What makes the B-52 bomber such a powerful and famous plane? This Boeing-built giant has ruled the skies for over 60 years. With the ability to carry huge amounts of bombs and adapt to almost any mission. But how does it all work? From its smart targeting systems to its massive bomb-carrying power, we're breaking down the secrets of this incredible U.S. Air Force bomber. Let's explore what makes the B-52 a true legend of the air. Cockpit and Navigation Inside the cockpit, it still looks like a plane from the 1970s. Behind it is the Weapon System Officer Station, and downstairs leads to the navigation area. Opening the nose reveals the radar, which helps the crew see better and track targets from far away, up to 50 nautical miles, now. Let's look at the plane's frame. The wings are made with strong steel alloy and magnesium to prevent rust. They have parts that store about 7,000 gallons of fuel. Because the wings are so long and flexible, the B-52 needs a long runway to take off and flies almost flat. The wing structure is connected to other parts of the plane, which are made of steel and magnesium. Panels are attached to these parts, making the plane light and aerodynamic. The B-52 features four bicycle landing gears, located at both the front and rear of the aircraft. Additionally, it has two wingtip outrigger wheels to prevent the wings from crashing. These are some of the largest landing gears ever designed. Interestingly, the left gear folds forward, while the right gear folds backward, allowing both to fit inside the plane. One fascinating feature of the landing gear is its ability to crab walk or move sideways. This function is particularly useful for countering crosswinds during landings in windy conditions. Since we're still near the landing gear, Let's open this ventral entry hatch. As you can see, there are small steps allowing the crew to enter the plane. From here, you'll find a small passage sandwiched between two huge engine control modules and communication compartments. These are computerized systems that manage and control the engine's performance. Moving forward, we reach the offense or navigation compartment. On the left side, we have the radar navigator, who also serves as the bombardier utilizing radar to target and direct weapons. The person on the right is also a navigator, though their role is broader, guiding the aircraft for the entire mission. Interestingly, this plane features an ejection seat that operates differently from conventional upward ejection seats. It ejects downward to a safe height for the pilot. Moving up to the second level towards the back of the aircraft, we find two additional seats forming the defense station. On the left is the electronic warfare officer, responsible for controlling all defensive equipment, including the previously mentioned ECM. This role is crucial, as the aircraft lacks substantial defensive equipment to evade enemy missiles or fighters. Additionally, the aircraft is equipped with upward-firing ejection seats, as depicted in the animation. The flight deck. Finally, let's explore the flight deck. The co-pilot seat is on the right, while the captain's seat is on the left. Proceeding forward, we encounter eight throttle levers. Notably, engines four and five protrude slightly further, as most pilots prefer using these inboard engines for minor throttle adjustments. Alternatively, the levers positioned behind can also be utilized to turn all eight engines to full throttle. There is also a glass window above, which aids pilots during air-to-air -air refueling, like the defense compartment. The pilot and co-pilot also have ejection seats. These panels blow off, allowing the ejection seats to safely jettison away from the aircraft. The engines. Before we delve into flying, let's explore the engine. The Super Fortress boasts approximately eight engines. They are arranged from engine number one to engine number eight in this order. These engines are paired within pods and suspended by four pylons positioned beneath and forward of the wing's leading edge. Now, let's delve into how a low bypass engine functions. The fan rotor draws in ambient air, which undergoes powerful compression in both the low pressure and high pressure compressors. Subsequently, the air enters the combustor, where fuel injection occurs. This process creates a constant burning of fuel and air, reaching temperatures of about 1,000 degrees Celsius. 
The resultant heat causes the gas to expand, leading it to escape from the combustor with high energy, flowing through both the high and low pressure turbines. As a consequence, the turbine blades rotate. The energy liberated by this process drives both the compressor and the fan, thus producing thrust. Unique flight controls. Before starting the plane, let's look at the basic controls. The control wheel helps steer the plane, and the rudder pedals and throttles are below it. The engine dials are here, with the engine fire shut off switch above. Below that, you have gauges for engine pressure, speed, exhaust temperature, and fuel flow. The two big TV screens are the EVS monitors, showing what's outside the plane, under the nose. There are two bulbs that help steer in low visibility using special scanners. To start the engines, first, switch to a pneumatic start and turn on the starter for engine number four. When the RPM reaches 15%, move the throttle. Do the same for engine number five. But wait a few minutes. For a quicker start, shotgun shells placed below the engines can spin all eight engines at once. After that, push the throttle for full power. The co-pilot's yoke controls the EVS monitors, has a red button to prevent engine stalls during takeoff, and a communication switch to talk to ground control or the crew. The stab trim stabilizer adjusts the tail elevators. We all know that most planes have ailerons on their wings, but the B-52 is one of the few planes that do not require ailerons, at least in the latest versions. Instead, it uses spoilers and flaps to turn the plane. These spoilers open up at a desired angle and opposite each other, as shown in the animation, while the flaps extend outwards, as demonstrated here. This action increases the surface area of the wings on both sides of the plane. During takeoff, all flaps are extended to their maximum capacity, creating extra lift to help the eight engines launch the aircraft off the ground. When landing, the spoilers help slow the plane, and the flaps make the landing smoother. The B-52 also uses a drag parachute to stop. First, a small pilot chute pulls out the big main chute, which is 13.3 meters wide, 27 meters long, and weighs about 200 pounds. The weapons system. The B-52 Stratofortress is 48 feet tall, 159 feet 4 inches long, and has a wingspan of 185 feet. For comparison, the AC-130 gunship is smaller, the Galaxy cargo plane is taller and wider, and the Soviet Tu-95 bomber costs about $26 million, while the B-52 costs about $94 million. The B-52's external rack can carry up to nine regular weapons, or six Paveway laser-guided bombs. These bombs can travel over 30 kilometers, and the higher the altitude, the farther they go. The rack can also hold up to 12 AGM-158 Joint Air-to-Surface Standoff Missiles, which can travel around 370 kilometers or 230 miles. This capability allows, for example, a bomber equipped with this system to target any Russian military installation near the border, offering a lower cost alternative to other cruise missiles. But that's not all. It even features an internal bomb bay door when loading. The door opens fully to provide more room for loading or unloading various weapon systems. However, when dropping or operating the bombs, it opens only halfway, likely to maintain the aerodynamics of the plane while flying at high altitudes. The new rotary weapons bay allows for a wider variety of munitions to be carried. It can be fitted with eight nuclear-capable air-launched cruise missiles ALCMs. Additionally, considering the external weapon bays, the system can carry up to 20 ALCMs on both sides of the wings. This missile was specially developed to enhance the effectiveness and survivability of the Boeing B-52 Stratofortress strategic bomber. Here's how it works. The first missile is dropped, and once it is safely away from the plane, it slowly deploys its wings and tail sections to glide toward its target using a jet engine. The new rotary weapon bay can rotate 360 degrees, dropping the second cruise missile, followed by the third and fourth. These innovative tactics of the rotary weapon system enable the plane to carry more missiles than older B-52 models. Not to forget, 
It can also carry up to 27 conventional bombs in its internal weapons bay. These can include Mark 82 dumb weapons, which can be dropped in succession on a large scale without any guidance system. Let's take a look at how the weapon system officer operates this in a simple process. Remember the laser guided bombs we talked about earlier? This is the targeting pod that helps aim at moving targets. Inside the weapon system officer's section, he can laser designate the target using this controller located here. This joystick helps turn the targeting pod and guide laser equipped weapons. When ready, he can flip the switch on the button. If a laser guided bomb is stored internally, this action opens the bomb bay door. Once released, the bomb can be guided to any mobile target, like a moving tank, through this laser targeting pod located on the wings obliterating it completely from thousands of feet away. This effectively turns the plane into a flying super fortress. But a question arises. Since these weapons are very heavy, what happens when you drop one and one side of the wing's weapon pylon is empty? It can tilt the plane to an angle. To fix this, the pilot can redistribute fuel in any configuration by pumping it throughout the jet. Fuel can be moved from auxiliary tanks main tanks, or outboard and external tanks to maintain the plane's center of gravity. This feature is also helpful if the plane has sustained battle damage or lost an engine. That's it for our look at the powerful B-52 Stratofortress. From its unique controls to its amazing weapons, this bomber is still a key part of the U.S. Air Force, with its advanced tech and flexibility. It's no surprise the B-52 will keep flying for many years, what do you think of this legendary plane? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss more videos on amazing military tech. Thanks for watching.